coming out. You know, as I was listening to the my, our supporters talk, I was thinking about how great this country that we live in really is and how the freedoms that we have to enjoy being in business for ourselves, uh, the right, the incentive to, uh, to make a living, to do whatever we want. I have three children, John Austin, Noah, and Sarah. And John Austin wants to be a veterinarian, Noah wants to be a pro football player, and Sarah wants to be an actress. <laughs> but it's great that they can do something like what they want to do in this country because of freedoms that we have. You know, as I look around today in the parking lot of, of the Casey Jones, the old country store, I see the engine that drives this economy, small business. I'm a small businessman, a farmer from a little place called Frog Jump. I never thought that Frog Jump would be something good, but it is. It's really good because little communities like Frog Jump, like Jackson, like Dixon, like Brownsville, they are what drives this country. They are the engine that moves us in the direction that our founders started many, many years ago. Organizations like the NFIB, what they stand for, National Federation of Independent Business, small businesses that are that need to be put back in the driver's seat. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. I am all over the district all the time. This is not complicated. The government is too big. They don't know what's best. We need to get the free market moving again and get the private sector back in control. It's our government. We elect the leaders. Our representatives should be just that, representatives of the people of the 8th District. You know, I was on the phone this morning with a businessman from Nashville, and we were talking, and he said, uh, Stephen, I'm scared. I met with a fellow the other day in Union City who owns uh, several businesses, and he said, Stephen, I'm going to tell you something. He said, I'm not going to move an inch till we get some stability in our government. Until we change policymakers in Washington, we're not going to get out of the mess we're in, folks. That's right. We've got to have people that are not going to be afraid to stand up and say, we've got to cut taxes for small business. We've got to cut taxes for people that employ the folks that spend their money all over this country. We've got an administration in office now that think more stimulus bills and more bailouts are the answer. Well, let me tell you something. My kids can't afford any more stimulus bills and bailouts. That's not the answer. We need to move forward. We've got a great opportunity this fall and November with picking up many, many seats in the House. You know, I'm a conservative first and a Republican second. We need to get back to our conservative roots of who we are. Less government, lower taxes, cut spending, a balanced budget amendment, be responsible, be transparent with the people's money. And that's what I'm going to do when I go to Washington. I know it's hard for a lot of you probably to think, but, but I love farming. Uh, we've been doing it for seven generations. Uh, we sing gospel music. I love that also. This is a sacrifice for me to go to Washington. If it was, if it was about me, I'd be at home in Frog Jump. But it's not about Stephen Fincher. It's never been about Stephen Fincher. It's about you guys. And I cannot stress that enough. This is a team effort. As a team, we can accomplish a lot. As one, I can't do anything. But as a team with people like NFIB, with their endorsement, with small businesses all over this country, we can change the direction of our country. And that's, that's what we're going to do this November. I'm not afraid to stand up for my principles. I have on my push cards, never vote to raise taxes. And a lot of people, they'll say, well, Fincher, you can't say that. Well, you know what? If you don't say it, you know what I'll be doing? Raising taxes. We're not going to raise taxes. The small business, the American people deserve better. We've got to get spending under control, transparency in Washington again, and that's what this is about, all about. I'm not a career politician. I don't plan to be. We've decided to serve 12 years after we win and come back home and I'll finish my life here. We need term limits in Washington. We need people that are gonna walk the walk and talk the talk, not the same old uh, politics as usual. We have enough career politicians in Washington and I'm not one of them, I assure you. So thank you again. I'm not a long speaker. I can say a lot in a, a small amount of time, but I'll leave you with five C's that I use lots of times when I close because I think this sums it up really, really well. The first one, we are a Christian nation, folks. Our founders were Christians, and we need to get back to those principles. Two, the Constitution is a real document. It's our guide. We need to look back at it and not try to, to, to just get crazy. We need to look at the Constitution. Three, we need common sense in Washington. 
did you ever think common sense would be such a valuable commodity? But it is. We need people that know what it's like to run a business, know what it's like to balance a budget, know what it's like to, to borrow money and pay it back. We're losing that in Washington. Four, we need true conservatives in office. We need to get back to those principles that Ronald Reagan used. He wasn't afraid to stand up. We need to get back to that. And the fifth C, as important as any, this is about the constituents of the 8th District. I'm going to represent you, not political parties in Washington, but the people of the 8th District. We've got a lot to offer here. We're a right-to-work state. We don't have a state income tax. We just need a good salesman for the 8th District that's going to fight to bring industry and put people back to work in the 8th District. And that's what I'm going to do. So God bless you and thank you for coming out. We look forward to working together as we move forward. And thank you. I want to thank NFIB again, Jim and Randy and all the guys for, for this endorsement. God bless you. Thank you. Well said, Stephen. Uh, just a couple of closing remarks. I, I know some of you all know that we have our uh, Jackson Area Action Council grassroots meeting. And so we're going to have that inside. Uh, from 11:30 until when are we going to be done now? One. One o'clock. We'll be wrapped up. We might even be wrapped up before then. But uh, basically, I'm just going to give a little bit of a federal and state update, and then we'll do a QA. and I'd really like to hear what's on your minds, what issues are on your minds. Uh, we really enjoy the exchange and staying in touch with you all on your big issues. We always learn something. So look forward to doing that. Uh, we have a couple of our our leadership council members up here that I do want to recognize. In addition to, to Jerry Wade Barracks, uh, we have. Uh, Norwood Jones, who thank you for letting us be here, Norwood, today. Norwood, everybody knows Norwood with the old country store and, and his realty business. Um, already said hello to Mayor Harris. Randy Warren is our sales representative in, in this area, and you all know many of you all know him. He's got his ear to the ground. He does a fantastic job. He believes in the product, and the product is you. Uh, Paul Rice, also on our leadership council, thank you for being here. He does a great job. Always get an email from Paul about every month with something I better read because it's good stuff. And Lynn Arnold is here, and of course with Chris and uh, Carter, thank you for being here as well. With that, we're also we have here uh, the Republican Party chairman. He's done a great job for Madison County, West Tennessee. Our friend Steve Maroney. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, sir. We'll see many of you all at lunch. Thank you for being here, everybody. This is a nice turnout on a nice day. God bless you.